48.5% from there. You know, that's almost like the irresistible force meeting the immovable object because KU is number four in the nation in field goal percentage defense. They're just out after people and not allowing them to shoot. Kansas State obviously doing a very good job. Foul was on the basketball from 48% from uh, three-point there. Foul was on Ron Meyer, the 6'9 senior center. There's that zone defense again. 3-2, back inside again. Manning goes to the outside. Geldner, three-point land. He's got it. Jeff Geldner, averaging just 3.9 points per game. You know, Roger Larry Brown was telling me he plays the off guard, but he also can play the point if need be. He can go out there and take that position. Kansas really helps in their man-to-man -man defense. And Meyer trying to get good position on Manning on the inside. Richmond now outside. He's so strong. Transfer from Moberly, J.C. Henson again for three-point land. Henson averaging just 7.3 points per game, and he's got six already. At a time three, Kansas State. I'm going to say that time, Milton Newton was all over Mitch Richmond, and he had to force the ball into the corner, and Henson hit the shot. Newton kicks it back to Geldner. Now Pritchard is 14. Piper's been injured all year. Arthroscopic knee surgery and then a pulled groin muscle. Piper will take the shot. He hits it. Chris Piper, not known as a shooter, averaging just 4.4 points per game. But Kansas has to look elsewhere. They can't rely just on Danny Manning. He's a great player, but one player doesn't make a championship team. You know, Roger, I talked about the discipline of these two clubs. It's very evident in the first couple of minutes of this game. You can see how well coached both of these teams are. Now, Manning's not going to have a lot of work defensively. Meyer is not an offensive threat. Geltner's on Will Scott. You know, in some instances, coaches would take advantage of Manning playing that man-to-man -man and really try to go to him to get fouls on him. And not Kansas State. And Meyer picks up another foul. Larry was trying to set that baseline pick, and he threw the arms out away from his body. So that's the second foul on Meyer. Well, you know, he fouled out of that game the other night in Colorado. He had 12 points and only played 13 minutes. And Fred McCoy, a six foot seven junior from Washington, D.C., will check into the game now for Kansas State. He's the player that really has played this position pretty much uh, through January and February and the half of December. He's back in there right now. They're a little disappointed with the way he plays his defense, so he's going to have to come on and play well here in the first half with Meyer with two fouls. Piper inside to Manning, stripped out of his hands, and it's Kansas State basketball. Is this a great rivalry or what? Uh, it's been going for so long, and so many great games during the last... 36 years in this building. You just think of the players like Boozer from Kansas State, Chamberlain from Kansas, on down the list. Well, that's really the cradle of basketball. Steal by Manning. Newton gets it to him. Look at him handle the ball at 6-11. The Piper in the middle. And let's see who they're going to call it on. Will Scott. Excuse me, it's going to be on Piper. Yeah, it's going to be on Piper. Manning kicks the ball into the middle on the break, and here goes Piper right down the middle. Good position by Scott right there. Well, that's a good move. Good defensive work. KU is fourth in the nation in defense field goal percentage, allowing the opposition to shoot just 41.3%. Tough man-to-man -man defense. Boy, Richmond got Newton up in the air. Newton got him, though. And that'll be the first foul on Milt Newton, six junior from Washington, D.C. We well, took Archie a, Marshall's place in the start. Yeah, it's a great matchup right here because Newton is really the best defensive player they have. And you can see Richmond take advantage of that. Good pump fake to get him in the air, and he hacked him across the arm. It's going to be very difficult for Kansas to shut Mitch Richmond down. He's going to get his 24 or 5. 76% free throw shooter on the season, 84% in conference. And I'll tell you what, he knocked down eight straight in the final two minutes in Lawrence in that first game this year when the pressure was on. You know, I read an interesting stat on this bit, Kansas State Club. You know, they are shooting in the last two minutes of the last ten games they've played, 85%. That is incredible. Kansas State leads Kansas 8-5. When you're an All-American, you attract an all
particularly when you're averaging 24 points a game. Watch Charles Bledsoe and Fred McCoy surround Danny Manning on the inside here, and the ball goes right off the end of his hand. Watch it go back outside. There's Bledsoe in outside, McCoy on the backside. Manning loses and goes out of bounds and back to K-State. Larry, in the first game against Kansas in Lawrence is Charles Bledsoe. you got to look at him right there. His last five games, over 13 points and seven rebounds. But McCoy got off to a terrible start. In 10 minutes, he picked up just five points, got three fouls right away. Really wasn't a factor in that game, yet they still picked up an impressive victory. Kansas State now out with a little bit more pressure that time, but they're still back in their zone. Kansas looking at to the inside. They're trying to sneak Manning in on the weak side as Newton takes it from outside and he hits it, and that's a two-pointer. Roger, that's what Kansas needs to do. If they can hit those outside shots and loosen that zone up, it'll open up things inside for Manning. 8-7. Kansas State a one-point lead. Just underway. 15-18. Left to go in the first half. So both of these clubs really showing a lot of discipline in their half-court game. Bledsoe loses it. And the reach-in from behind. The foul's going to be on McCoy. That was the second steal in a row for Danny Manning. He came up and slapped that one. What kind of defensive player is he? We hear about his great offensive capability. Well, you can see right there, we've already played about five minutes of basketball, and he already has two steals. He's got great hands. Take a look inside. If it's not there, move the ball on the perimeter. If the Jayhawks can hit some bombers from the outside beyond that three-point range, it'll make Kansas State come out of that zone. Pritchard's a key for him. He's got to hit from outside. Newton from three-point land, in and out. And McCoy, the rebound. Henson's a great athlete. He's a decathlete. Will Scott, three-pointer, hit! That's why they're shooting 48% for three-point range. They've got the four top percentage shooters in shooting. 11-7. I'll tell you, you can play tough defense. You can do all the right things. And they come down and start throwing on one from three-point land, and it doesn't really matter. alley -oop to Manning. Won't go. The tip up and in by Milt Newton. That's a good catch by Manning. He got up and soft shot just rolled off the edge of the rim, and Newton was in good position for the tip in. Larry, it's hard to catch up when you're getting twos and the other guy's getting threes all the time. Kansas again. Look at Manning out top. Henson gets it to Richmond. The pump. And tipped up by McCoy. That's offense by accident right there. Oh, that's two good offensive tip in. One by McCoy and the other one on the other end for Kansas by Newton. Kansas again continues to look to the inside. You hate to reduce the game down to that simplistic of form, but that's basically what it is as Manning gets open and gets it in. Boy, that's his spot, that little baby hook from the baseline. He does a great job not putting the ball on the floor. He can get it high, he keeps it high, and he goes right up with it. Well, he had a good teacher. His dad worked with him all through, and his dad was a great pro, pro basketball for a long time. 13-11. K-State leads it by two. McCoy, big body. Down. Good post up by McCoy that time. He had Piper on his hip and wheeled on him. Boy, fired up. Pretty nice to have a guy come off the bench and play that way for you. 15-11. Boy, they look, they look, they look to Manning. Newton will penetrate. Air ball. Manning gets it and puts it in, though. Now, talk about good hands. Not only on defense, but loose balls, too. He always comes up with something underneath. Good defensive work by Kansas that time. It was good help. Will Scott guarded by Gelder. They're looking inside to McCoy. Piper's about 60%. Boy, he's had the bad knee. He's had a bad groin. 12 in the shot clock. Richmond. Boy, he gets Newton in the air of the shot. And Manning the rebound. Manning from outside, three-pointer for Danny Manning. 
That'll show you some of his versatility. Not only the inside game, but he can go outside and shoot it too. And Kansas has got the lead, 16-15. Pritchard will pick Henson up right in midcourt. Good defense again. Excellent work by Pritchard. Manning on Bledsoe. Kicks it back to Scott. Spin move. Now Manning stripped it again. That's the third time he's gotten a piece of the ball. Really good Kansas defense right now. They're making the Wildcats of K-State work awfully hard. Richmond. Pull up, Pop. Got it. He is so tough to guard, Roger, because he can take it to the hole, he puts it on the floor well, or he can stand and just go straight up from 20 feet. That's his first field goal, 17-16. Pritchard from three-point land. He hits it. Boy, he's a key man for the Jayhawks of Kansas, averaging almost 11 points a game. And this is a club that's shooting 29% from three-point range. And this particular youngster is shooting less than 20%. And I mean, last year as a freshman, he was a great three-point shooter. Richmond, got it. Roger, I like the way Kansas State works their offense to get Richmond out there after about 10 seconds of handling the ball. They put him on the top of the key, and he just kind of handles Newton one-on-one. -on -one. Pritchard, three-pointer. Tipped around. Henson comes away with it. Kansas State, three on three. Will Scott, Newton the rebound. And Pritchard will slow it up. Manning, three-pointer, got yeah. it. Danny Manning, his second straight three-pointer. And he's got 10, and it's 22-19 Kansas. Well, he's off to a great start, Roger. We played just over 10 minutes of basketball, and he's gotten him inside and outside. I think they're really going here. I'm more impressed with the way Kansas is playing defense than anything they've done so far. They're really getting after K-State. And Larry Brown's got three players ready to come in because, man, you work hard on his defensive scheme of things. Will Scott, who handled the ball, had such a great game in Lawrence. And Steel, Manning got it again. Pritchard, one on three. No call. Gilder to follow it in. you got to continue to play, and Gelder did and got the basket. Three guys laying on the floor. And a foul on Pritchard. His first, and Kansas will bring in three substitutes. But we've got a timeout on the floor. Jayhawks lead the Wildcats, 24-19. Since 1950, they've been playing at Ahern Fieldhouse here in Manhattan, Kansas. But, Larry, next year, brand new facility. Yeah, but what you may ask is, where did they play before 1950? Well, they played in a little place called Nichols Gym, which seated 2,800 people. And they literally sat in the rafters, as you saw in that picture. And that picture right there are two guys carrying out a dummy that had ketchup on it. They had thrown it from the rafters because they wanted a new facility and they wanted to demonstrate to the legislator how badly they needed a new place. Now they're going to have a great new one. Fred Bramley's College Center is going to see 13,500 people. It's a gorgeous facility. Substitutions for the University of Kansas checking into the game right now is Lincoln Miner number 11, Otis Livingston number 12, Keith Harris 45, and Mike Masucci number 44. Also for Kansas State, some substitutions. That's Dobbins 41 who's checked into the game. Buster Glover number 11. I'll tell you, it's taken a lot out of these players already. They've worked awfully hard. You know, it's really hot now, in here. The too, shot he clock has been stuck on 24 for about five seconds. Now it starts again. So there was a malfunction with the shot clock and the travel. That's on Otis Livingston. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that if it gets stuck again. I don't think anyone picked up on that but you. Larry Brown did, I guarantee you. He was <laughs> looking at it. So Kansas remains with Manning in the middle, but a, an entire new cast of characters around it. And Harris is whistled for the foul. Harris is a 6'5 sophomore from Santa Monica, California. Oh, he's been in Larry Brown's doghouse all year. He uh, 
missed a lot of classes early in the year. And Larry says, I can't reward a kid for not going to class by playing him in games. And when he starts doing better in that aspect of it, then I can start rewarding him by playing him. Well, and they I... need Harris badly. He was their top six man last year. Richmond for three-point line. Roger, they move that ball so very well and get it into his hands. Stayed excellent discipline on their offense. 24-22, Harris is stripped in the lane, and the foul's going to be on Dobbins. He's a 6'5 junior from Humboldt, Kansas. Pretty good move down the lane right there by Harris. He took it strong in there. Dobbins tried to get in position. In fact, almost all of the K-State players were there to draw the charge. And four, Clint Normore checks into the game right now. And Livingston will sit down. Normore is an interesting story. He transferred to from Wichita State when the Shockers disbanded their football program. He played for the Jayhawks football team. He's got two years of basketball eligibility remaining. Larry Brown's very excited about him. He recruited him out of high school at Wichita East and says that he has been a big, big plus for them in this injury-riddled season as Harris nails the first one. He looks like a defensive back. Boy, doesn't he? All right, Miner came in and stripped it away, and a jump ball possession will go to Kansas. Lincoln Miner's a guy they were really counting on, junior college transfer, and he has not lived up to the expectations of Larry Brown. We'll be back to Manhattan in a moment. It's the King. It is the King. I thought, I, was, I thought I was in Memphis for a minute. The King lives for the cat. I thought maybe they had taped you earlier, uh, but no, obviously not, right? No, I was... I was just sitting back eating some popcorn with you earlier, right? That's all, that's all we were doing. Here's what Kansas has done. Five of eight from two points. Four of ten from three-point land. Kansas State, four of six and four of six. Kansas State utilizes the three-point shot more than Kansas does. In fact, they've taken almost twice as many shots as Kansas. That's Normore. He's number four. You guard Henson. Henson's had a good half. Masucci's out on Dobbins right now. Masucci's seven-foot freshman center in Kansas City. Boy, Henson... They call the foul on Masucci. What happens on that? Both players are moving. Well, it's really the official's judgment. They made the call, and obviously the position he was in, he felt like Masucci was the one who made the foul. That's a pretty tough matchup right there. Well, I'll tell you, Masucci ran into an elbow of his teammate Danny Manning in the Oklahoma game, suffered a concussion, and broke a bone underneath of his eye just when Larry Brown felt that the young freshman was starting to come on. Kansas has been racked by injuries, some academic problems this year. This is a team Larry thought had a chance to win it all. Now they're just they're, they're struggling to get in the tournament. You know, I talked to him at practice today, and he said he felt like this might be the best club he ever had. And I'm talking about one before the season started. Kansas zoning it now. Stretching it out pretty good, too, in a 2-3. With Masucci inside and Manning, that gives him two big guys. Good wingspan from him. Hanson from three-point land. He is three of three from out there. Well, he's shooting 47% from three-point area. In fact, he's shooting better from there than he is from two-point area. It's tied at 25, Manning on the baseline, and the foul outside on Bledsoe. You know, Roger, across the country, there's so many great basketball rivalries, but whenever we think of college basketball, as I said, this is really the cradle of college basketball. This is where it all kind of got started. And these two schools really represent the rivalry and the fun of college basketball. I'll tell you, these students are in here. They were here two hours before game time, ready to come in and, and watch a good basketball game. Masucci, he misses. Manning, the offensive board. And traveling's called on Danny Manning. I had a big pep rally this afternoon here in Manhattan. And as you mentioned, the tradition, great coaches, too. I mean, you go back as we take a look at Manning inside on the offensive glass. Watch Manning here. You're going to see him front and backside. Mitch Richmond there on the inside. Manning went right up over the top of him, got it legitimately, I think, and made the move. You see him do that little shuffle right there, and that's why he got it. Hey, speaking of that pep rally, I had a chance to address that group today. And I'll tell you what, you talk about a fired up bunch. They were ready to come out here and play themselves. 6-12, left to go, first half, Bledsoe inside, misses, Dobbins tipped it in. First two points for Dobbins. 
I think he's going to issue a warning right now and tell the K-State players to leave the basketball alone. When it comes through that net, he doesn't want them to touch it. The ball was tipped in by Dobbins on the other end for Kansas State, and when it came through there, watch Charles Bledsoe. Now, he's going to make, he's going to miss this shot. Now, Dobbins will come in and touch it. Watch it go through. Now, watch the ball come in. Now, watch Bledsoe. You didn't get to see the end of it, but he slapped it away. He's saying, leave the ball alone and let them catch it and bring it in bound. Pritchard is checked back in for Kansas. No more. Bad pass by Harris. Pritchard able to come back up with it and kicks it out to Masucci. Normore, three-point land, got it. Well, that's a big basket for Kansas. If he can reach down there and pull a guard off that bench to come out and make those threes for you. I think we've had more three-point shots than we had two-point shots tonight. KU seventh in the nation at field goal percentage, almost 53%. Glover missed it, got it back. Richmond, that's a three, and Manning the rebound. Jayhawks lead at 28-27. Just over five minutes to go. First half. Three-point land. A little too hard. And Richmond the rebound. You know, Roger, it's just exactly the type of game I think we expected to see. Both clubs playing a little close to the vest. They're not going out running the break too much and playing good defense. Normore went for the steal. Richmond wide open in the corner. Three-pointer. And two Kansas players battling for the rebound. Harris and Pritchard. It goes off them, Kansas State basketball. And you know what? Larry Brown got right off his bench, went over and applauded the baseline, said, that's okay. Both of you are going after it. That's what I want. And Milt Newton will check back into the game now. Along with Chris Piper for Kansas and Will Scott and Fred McCoy come back in for the Wildcats of Kansas State. with a good move outside. You know, he needs to stop and pull up and take that jumper. He's been hitting well here in the first half. All he's taken is three-pointers. He's made all three of them. That's Scott. Henson will pull up. The leaner inside really forced at that time. McCoy keeps it alive. And the foul is going to be on Piper. Second foul. Good bump fake that time to get Piper in the air. I'll tell you what, it was really tough to guard inside. When you get that offensive rebound, if you get that little pump fake, most of the time that guy's going to commit because he doesn't want the shot to go in from that close. Coming in for Kansas State, 25, Carlos Diggins, 6'4", junior out of South Bend, Indiana. You know, he's really been quiet in the first half for Kansas State is Scott. He had 16 in the first game against Kansas and Lawrence. He did not have too much out of him. One three-pointer for him, and that's been it. Harris reports in. Piper will sit down. Piper, uh, Larry Brown told me the best he can get him was about 12, 14 minutes. He says he just is hurting that much. And McCoy misses the second one. Tied at 28 with 414. Left to go, first half. Boy, this is the start of a tough stretch for Kansas. They've got Duke at home on Saturday, then Oklahoma and Missouri on the road. Four tough games, four clubs that have been ranked in the top 20 this year. Fouls on McCoy. Now, see, that's something that Harris gives Kansas. He's a good post up player. Well, he's got good size to him, and inside when he receives that ball, it's, he's almost 6'6, weighs 205. No, the book on him is he's very quick, very explosive, and he can take the ball in there and do something with it. He'll start going to class, he can play a little bit more. Ron Meyer checks back into the game, and McCoy will sit down. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Larry Brown. He's a disciplinarian. We'll remind you at halftime, top 20 and key scores to feature on Danny Manning and Larry Brown. Bob Lee will be by at halftime. Manny, Newton, Harris, Geldner, and Pritchard. Three-point land. 
In and out. Offensive board. Harris can't get it to go. Newton battling. And finally, Kansas State comes up with it. And Gelder's going to be whistled for the foul. Okay, that was like putting a boxer on the ropes in the corner. No one could go anywhere, and they were struggling to come up with the ball. Watch it roll around on the floor. Newton loses it right here. He kind of goes to the floor. Two Kansas State players go to the floor. Henson comes up with it, and then Geldner committed the foul. And he makes the tackle. It's almost as good a hit as that Wildcat gave us on the open of the show. You're looking right now at one of the very best free throw shooters in the nation, Steve Henson. Uh, he's had a big game for him. He's got 10 points. There's Larry Brown right there talking to his assistants, or maybe to himself right now. Talk about great. Henson is second in the race. leader is number two. 52 of 56. Kansas State leads it, 30-28. Kansas has had some problems this year with academics and injuries. Marvin Branch, the 6'10 center, ineligible at semester. Archie Marshall with his second major knee injury in three years. Mark Randall, great freshman last year, had to have his jaw realigned, some sinus problems, deviated septum. He's out for the year. Sean Alvarado, a 6'10 center, was redshirted early in the year. And Joe Young, a junior college transfer, didn't get enough credits to qualify. And then, of course, Chris Piper has struggled with his injuries throughout the year. He got like Masucci's missed some time. It's just been a very, very difficult year for this man right here, Larry Brown. Very intense, very competitive. As we mentioned, he thought this was a team that maybe would take him all the way in Danny Manning's senior year. Take a look at what Manning and Richmond have done tonight. Pretty much on course. Good trap by Kansas State. Great pass by Harris. Oh, what a great pass. I'll tell you, Harris is a talent. And it's I know it's driven Larry Brown nuts that he hasn't played him this year, but you got to do what you got to do. Watch Gilner receive this ball. Harris with an excellent pass. Just thread the needle, get it inside that Kansas State trap. Good move. Excellent play by Gilner. Foul was on Carlos Diggins, his first. And Gilner with seven points. Boy, look at the rainbow on that. Now with eight, and Richmond comes back in. Boy, Harris could be a factor as Richmond checks back in down the stretch for Kansas. They're five and four. If he starts getting some significant playing time, boy, it could just change things all around for him. Kansas State starts with the stack offense down low. They're trying to go for Steal by Harris. Well, you're talking about people on the bench to help you. How about this guy? Keith Harris. 33-30. Kansas with the lead. Coming into this game tonight, Harris had been averaging just over 11 minutes a game. Had only played in 13 games for the University of Kansas out of a possible 24. Roger, I don't want to beat a dead horse to death, but i got to tell you, Kansas' defense is outstanding. They're really doing a great job. Meyer hits it. And just as I say that, K-State makes one. Well, Meyer at 6'9", Harris at 6'5", and the first two for the 6'9", senior center. And it's 33-32 with 2.33 left to go first half. Oh, we had a great one-point first half last night, Iowa State and Missouri. This game's shaping up the same way. I will tell you, the Big 8 is as competitive a conference as it is in the country. They've got four clubs right at the top that can play with anybody. Newton, in and out. Look at Manning, get that loose ball. Good hustle by Danny Manning. Those are the little intangibles that you got to see in players. Pro scouts look for. Yeah, you can handle the ball. Yeah, you can shoot it. Yeah, you can rebound. But what about the other parts of your game? You saw Danny Manning exhibit some of it right there. Many feel, of course, he'll be the first pick in the NBA draft. There are some people who feel a kid named Will Perdue at Vanderbilt could be the first pick. Kansas very patient on offense right now. Pritchard, three point. No, he goes inside to Manning. No call. Newton tips it in. Good move by Newton to get inside, and now Kansas State down by three. Newton on Richmond. The spin move. Traveling call. 
Let's take a look at Danny Manning down low with the defensive pressure from Kansas State. Look at Meyer on the backside, a little bump right there. Manning takes it back up, leans back. What's Newton slip inside right there and just roll it right off his fingertips for the tip in. Good move by Milt Newton. And Lincoln Miner has checked into the game for the University of Kansas. He's a 6'3 junior out of Houston, Texas. He was one of the guys that Larry Brown was counting on so much this year. He's a great junior college player, All-American. But Kansas is going to hold that basketball and try to milk that shot clock this trip. 1-10 left to go, first half. Newton, three-pointer. Got it! Milk Newton. Yeah, that's the way you milk it. You stick it right in the bottom of the net. Nine points for Newton, and it's 38-32. Biggest lead for the Jayhawks. Less than a minute to go, first half. Good help by Harris that time. Manning with a good front job on the inside, trying to keep the ball away from Charles Bledsoe. There's the man. Richmond won't go. Kansas basketball. And Larry Brown says one shot. Full court pressure now as K-State wants to set up their defense. Changed the call, Roger. They changed the call. The they ball did. is going to go back to Kansas State. Thirty-two seconds left to go first half. I think the official got confused there. He yelled white, but pointed the other end toward Kansas. It happens to all of us, right? Never. Guys in the striped shirts, they can make mistakes occasionally. Tell you what, they've done a nice job this first half. They really have. This is a game where you got to keep it under control. Crowd is a big factor here in Manhattan. Shot clock is off. 16 on the game clock. 38-32. take the shot? Henson. Blocked by Manning. Meyer gets it and puts it in just before time expires. And that ends the first half from Ahern Fieldhouse. In Manhattan, Kansas. What hits and makes the move in here. Manny with a good block. Meyer right on top of the basketball. Takes it, sticks it right back in the basket. Well, that's tough when you make a good defensive play like Manning just did and have Kansas State get the last pass through the first half. Well, nonetheless, the Jayhawks have a four point lead at halftime. And right now, let's go back to our ESPN studios, get you updated on everything else happening in college basketball with Bob Lee. Bob? Okay, Rog, hope those bruises aren't too bad from the pregame. 38 34 score. And we're at halftime. First game of our doubleheader tonight. Game two coming along. North Carolina State, number 14 of the country, taking on Clemson. It's getting to that critical time of year as everyone begins to align themselves in the conference standings and look towards the postseason conference tournaments, then the field of 64. Many critical things in college basketball, but the news item of the moment. Obviously, in our pregame, when a rogue runaway wildcat on, wi on roller skates became part of our production. Let's now revisit the early moments of our telecast. Roger holding his ground well is what happened. What you're going to see tonight are two disciplined basketball teams. A Kansas State club that really in preseason was picked fourth, fifth by a lot of riders. They played much better than that. You're going to see a Kansas team that's been decimated by academics and injuries, and they have fought back to win four in a row. I think Larry Brown's got his club ready to play. Of course, they rely on Danny Manning. He might be the player of the year in college basketball. Roger, if you're watching, you know. Every time we watch it here, we watch it about 20 times. We'll get you a copy for the home VHS if you're scoring with us at home. Raj takes the charge. It did not go to the line, but his team got the ball back. 38-34, we're at the half. K-State's got the lead. We'll take a look at Danny Manning after this. Let's get it back to Roger and Larry. It's been a tough night for Raj, a physical evening. Yeah, Bob, but it's getting a lot easier now. We've got the uh, guilty culprit here with us, the Kansas State Wildcat mascot. And I don't know, I, I, he's fouled out of the game, hasn't he, Larry? He's gone. He's gone. All he's right, we're going to get him out of here now. All right. <laughs> Good first half of basketball. Three-pointers were obviously very effective, but Kansas with some strong defense. I thought Roger, or, uh, Kansas' defense was as good as I've seen it all year long. They absolutely got after Kansas State and forced them into a game I don't think they wanted to play. Let's take a look right now at some of the highlights here in the first half. Danny Manning, you talk about his inside play. How about his outside shooting? He came down, made two of these from three-point range. This one was the first one. Got it right in the bottom. 
You go to the other side, you talk about him, you got to talk about Mitch Richmond. Watch his outside move. Put the ball on the floor. He's got Newton backing up on his heels. He takes the ball to the left and goes up with that nice soft jumper. He's so famous. I think one of the outstanding plays, and we talked about defense really in the, in the first half as we look at the scoring leaders, was Manning and Richmond in that square off. They're right on target as we talked about in the first half. Henson, of course, knocking down three-pointers for Kansas State. And Keith Harris coming off the bench doing a great job for the Jayhawks. And we talked about KU's excellent defense in the first half. It was a steal right there. It's one of the many good plays that they had in the first half because of their defense. Oh, we talked about Harris coming off the bench for Kansas. McCoy came off the bench for Kansas State. But the three-point shooting, especially by Kansas, was surprising. It was, and it really is a big surprise. I know a pleasant surprise for Larry Brown. Obviously, if they can do that, they can open it up in the middle and give Danny Manning some more scoring room. All right. Larry Brown has never lost here in Manhattan during his tenure as the Jayhawks head coach. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Roger Twago, Larry Conley back with you at Ahern Fieldhouse in Manhattan, Kansas. Jayhawks with a four-point lead over the Wildcats. And first half statistics, Larry. And what we're going to see is a pretty good shooting. Kansas is 52 percent, K-State 55. Well, you're not kidding. 15 and 29 for the Jayhawks and 12 and 22 for the Wildcats. Let's move on to the three-point field goal shooting. Kansas... 6 of 12, a club that does not take the three-point shot very much. Did very well within the first half. Kansas State was 5 of 7, 71%. Good free throw shooting by Kansas State, 5 of 6. Kansas only 2 of 3. Here's the rebounding, dead even, 12 and 12. Well played game so far. And six offensive boards apiece for each team. Turnovers fairly even, Kansas with 5. K-State was seven. And Kansas State usually does not turn the ball over that much, and I credit the Kansas defense for doing that. And how are you feeling now after we talked to the Wildcat? Uh, well, I feel a lot better. I, uh, I think I, think I hurt you more than he hurt me. I'll tell you what, he hit you. I thought it was a clip. I started to throw the flag, and I decided not to, and then when I turned around, you'd recovered. He knocked my box out of my pocket. I couldn't even pick up my box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry. Hey, there, there's our pal. I'll tell you what, it was some roller skating right, he, move. He, he, you know, he says, I, I really didn't see you guys. I said we were the only two people on the basketball floor. <laughs> we're underway, second half. Geldner, Pritchard, Piper, Newton, and Manning, the original starting five for the Jayhawks. Same starting five for Kansas State. Henson, Scott, Richmond, Bledsoe, and Meyer. Well, I've got to tell you, Pritchard and Geldner had a great first half. Nine and eight points respectively, and that really helped Kansas forge to that four-point lead. Newton, and in. Kansas has been getting everything from the perimeter or right underneath the basket, Wilder. Because Larry Brown, in teaching this game of offense, the way the three-point goal is structured, he either wants a 20-foot shot or a 15-foot shot and in. Nothing between 15 and 19 feet, and that makes sense. You get the three for the 20. If you're going to shoot one inside, get it inside 15 feet. Biggest lead for the Jayhawks at six. They lead it 40-34, just underway. Second half, Kansas State second place in the Big eight. The Jayhawks tied with Missouri for third. Meyer, the turnaround shot, won't go. The tip over the top by Bledsoe, and Kansas comes away with it. Geldner in the corner. Newton, wide open. That's two. He's got it. Boy, Milton Newton has had some kind of game so far tonight for the Jayhawks of the University of Kansas. He's got 13 points, and it's 42-34, their biggest lead. Obviously, you want to come out of the dressing room to start the second half and have a good start, and Kansas has gotten that from Newton. Steal underneath, and the whistle. Foul's going to be on Danny Manning. That's his first. Tried to force it to the inside. K-State did that two time to Bledsoe, and both Piper and Manning were there. Larry Brown up, calling the defense, and Danny Manning passing the rest of his teammates. Nobody in any serious foul trouble. You know, I only remember Kansas going to his own defense one time in this first half. It basically was just their man-to-man -man defense through this whole game. Meyer kicks it back outside. Richmond, an air ball, and Pritchard comes away with it. Piper can't hold on to the pass. You know what? That could be a result of too. inactivity in practice. You know, this young man has had a groin pull, pull that muscle away from his, his pelvic, uh, bone. Pull, pelvic bone, and he really doesn't have a, much of a chance to practice. And he told Larry Brown, he said, Coach, if I'm going to play, I've got to be able to practice. And you may have seen a little bit of that right there because that was a good, crisp pass. He just couldn't hold on to it. Geldner guarding Scott. Piper on Meyer. 
three-point line for Will Scott. Got it. That's his second three-pointer. He's got six points, and it's 42-37. Relatively quiet first half for him, but he seems to be getting it around a little bit. That was a good shot. Pritchard gets trapped underneath. Scott steals it away. Pritchard just ran out of room down there. It was a good play by Scott. Good defensive work. Richmond off the pick by Meyer. Meyer tips it in. So Meyer set the pick. Basket didn't go, but he went right to the hoop and got the offensive board in. You know, he's the lunch pail guy. He's the guy that goes in and works underneath and works hard. He just worked and pounds as hard as he can, and that was a great tip in. Manning the turnaround and in. What a soft touch. Hey, Meyer earned a starting job two games ago because he worked so hard in practice, according to Lon Kruger. And you, you know what Kruger's practices are like. Let's pitch it again outside on Steve Henson. Good defense by the Jayhawks. I, I keep saying that, but they really are playing very, very well. Bledsoe can't get it. Meyer tips, still battled around, stripped away, and the foul from behind is going to be on Richmond. That's his first. Larry Brown is fifth year. Of course, there's a lot of speculation that he'll be leaving Kansas. There's some NBA jobs that are out there, some expansion teams, the Charlotte connection. Carl Shearer, a good friend of his. Larry's daughters are down in that particular part of the country. And I want to remind you, North Carolina State and Clemson coming up next. Larry told me the other day, he goes, a lot of it has to do because of Manning's situation. They feel because when Danny leaves, I'll leave. He goes, once Danny graduates and is gone, I'm still going to be here. And then all the talk will finally die. Boy, Pritchard got caught in the air. And they're going to call a foul on Piper. That's the third foul on Chris Piper. You know, that was really good hustle that time by Chris Piper to get over to that basketball. And also a good one by Ron Meyer because he screened him off. And Piper could do nothing but reach over the top of him. And that's a big foul right there because they need that young man in there. And I think they're going to substitute for him now. Keith Harris is going to come in and Piper's going to sit down. That does not hurt the Jayhawks to have Harris in there. Sixteen oh nine left to go. 44-39. Kansas leads it by five. Richmond guarded by Newton. The leaner. Fire. And he's fouled. Foul's going to be on Milt Newton. And Meyer's got eight points. Take it to the glass and strong. Ron Meyer for his second offensive rebound in less than two minutes on the miss by Richmond. Watch the ball come off. Now watch Meyer and all of these people come down with this ball and go straight back up with it. Excellent move. And he completes the three-point play. And a timeout on the floor. Kansas leads Kansas State 44-42. What's Ryan Ma Ron Meyer do his work in here, Roger? He's done an excellent job for Kansas State. His second game in a row to start. Watch him roll off his pick and pick up the rebound and stick it back in with a good tip in. This is the kind of work that the Wildcats have got to ha have if they're going to beat Kansas. That's the first tip in. This is the one that just went before commercial. Richmond misses. Watch Meyer come back in. This time, not the tip, but he grabs it, pulls it down, and goes back up with a power move and draws the foul. Excellent board work by the 6'9 center. He's a senior from Wichita, Kansas. Season average 3.7 so far tonight. He has got nine points. Kansas with a eight-point lead at one time early in the second half. Now just a two-point advantage with 15-53 left to go. Kansas State still in the zone. Extended out a little bit more. I think they've opened up that inside zone, and maybe Manning will get open. Boy, not much, though. They're still looking. Four guys are within about four feet of him. There's Newton open. Won't go. Manning tips it out to Geldner. Richard passed up a shot. And now they call a foul on Danny Manning. A 
Let's watch the foul again on Danny Manning. Watch him on the baseline, try to move in. Now, there's Meyer right there trying to block him off. I don't know. That could have gone both ways. I think the fact that Meyer went down really caused the attention to go to center court, and that's why the official blew the whistle. Second foul on Danny Manning. Henson in the lane. Manning the rebound. Henson can sky is a seven-foot high jumper, a decathlete. Showed you some good penetration that time. That was a tough shot, though. He went in him up some very, very good And that's players. a double dribble by Pritchard. I'm getting a little raggedy right now for the Jayhawks. And a foul is going to be on Geldner. That's his third. So Piper has three. Geldner has three. Yeah, Kansas got out to that little bit of a lead there. And then Kansas State came right back. They did it basically on the strength of Ron Meyer's rebound. Kansas already with five team fouls. K-State with just one. Newton with the steal. Kansas has got a three on two to Pritchard. Oh, what a shot. What a move by Kevin Pritchard. Boy, that's big time right there. Excellent move by Pritchard inside. And if you're going to handle the fast break after a steal, it's best to get the ball in the middle of the floor. Now watch Newton move to the inside. See him fill the lanes right there. Gilner's on the left. Pritchard's on the right. He simply dished it off and it was a that was just taking the shot and throwing the ball up and in. You were right. That's a big-time move. Watch Newton make the pass now. Here's Pritchard going up with a shot, and there's the foul. That's the second lock on the highlight reel tonight. <laughs> we know what the first one is. <laughs> what the first one is. Right. Lincoln Miner has checked in for the Jayhawks. He's number 11. You know, Larry Brown was off the bench earlier talking to Kevin Pritchard about that ball that he double-dribbled. I think he just atoned for it. And Pritchard completes the three-point play. He's got six on the night. He averages for the game. And it's 47-42, Kansas. Richmond. And Harris, he can sky. He's a strong rebounder. Piper tries to get the entry pass to Manny, and it's knocked out. Bledsoe with a good defensive play inside. Piper tried to drop it in there, and he got there before uh, Manning could reach down and pick it up. There's a guy that's done a great job of oh, coaching, yeah. Lon Kruger. You talk about somebody that uh, is going to be one of the great coaches in the future. It's going to be him. Silver Lake, Kansas. Small <laughs> little community. Yeah. You know, he was the Big 8 player of the year for two years here at Kansas State and was a guard. Great little player. Coached at Pan American before coming back to his alma mater. They're succeeding Jack Hartman, one of the great coaches in Kansas State history. Minor, miss, Piper the rebound. Harris on the baseline, can't do anything with it, but is able to draw the foul. It's going to be on Bledsoe, and that's his second. My Bledsoe's been non-existent tonight offensively, averaging almost 10 points a game, hasn't scored, really hasn't been that active. Was that file on Meyer? I think they maybe called it on Meyer. They did. Changed the call to Meyer, so that's his third. So McCoy will check in. They don't lose much at all. Kind of tough for Meyer to go out of the game right now because in the second half, his rebounding has kind of kept Kansas State in this game. They're down by five. And Buster Glover will check in, and Will Scott comes up. It's a really a small lineup that Kansas State has in there right now with Meyer out. Six sevens their biggest man. Manning, Piper, Miner, Pritchett, Harris. There are three guys around Manning there. They're looking for him. Kansas again showing good patience on this half court game. If they can't get it to Manning, they're going to run some clock, and they're down to 15 seconds. Ten on the shot clock. 
There's Manning. Won't go. Piper tips. And the whistle, it's going to be on Piper crashing in from behind. And that'll be the fourth on Chris Piper. I saw a lot of white shirts hit the deck over there, and it looked like maybe uh, Piper might have been the one who did it. I guess he was. Let's watch it again on the pass to the inside. Manning, look at him surrounding. They've got three players standing there. In fact, all five of them were in the screen right there when Manning caught the ball. So Piper checks out with his fourth foul and 44, Mike Masucci, 6'10", freshman center from uh, Grandview, Missouri, a suburb of Kansas City, will come into the game. Masucci's a pretty good defensive player for a freshman. Harris now is matched up on Richmond. It's a good matchup, Harris. Richmond has him scored in the second half. McCoy misses Bledsoe and in. First two points for Charles Bledsoe. And it's 47-44. I think we're grooming ourselves for one of those patented Kansas, Kansas State finishes. Pritchard, three-point land, in and out. Tough break for Pritchard. I thought that one was in. Glover, good fake. Hits. Buster Glover. That's the way you do it. You get the guy in the air and you float by him and you get your little 12-foot jumper. Now the crowd's into it as if they hadn't been already. 47-46. They've got to let Manning touch the ball. Now they've moved him back outside. Miner won't go. Roger has been their Achilles heel all year. If they could make those three-point shots, it would just make this ball glove so much better because it makes Manning open more underneath, and that's what they really need. Kansas has led this entire second half. Now Kansas State's got a chance for the first time to take the lead. They've led by as many as eight. Richmond turns, shoots, in and out. It's a trip. Let's go. Bledsoe. And Kansas State has come from eight down to lead by one, 48-47. I will tell you what has hurt Kansas in the second half has been the offensive rebounding of K-State. Harris in and out. Masucci, it's stripped away. And the foul is going to be on Henson. That's his second. Mike Masucci was in good position to get that rebound, and Henson sneaked in from behind and tried to strip him of the ball, and he got him from the elbow all the way to the fingers. A timeout on the floor. 11 minutes left to go in the game. Kansas leads Kansas by one. Roger, we talked a great deal about people surrounding Danny Manning when he gets the ball. Look at the people that surround Mitch Richmond when he goes up. You're going to see three Kansas players right there, but Charles Bledsoe in great position to knock that ball back in. The offensive rebounding in the second half has been the key to this basketball game for Kansas State and their resurgence. But during the game, K-State has one more offensive rebound than does Kansas, but I think Kansas State has been more proficient in sticking that ball back in. Yeah, they're getting it back in when they get it. Ron Kruger, the head coach of Kansas State. He looks like he can step out and play again. He looks like he's 20 years old. Yeah. Those guys are definitely 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I haven't taken a charge in a long time, but I, I'm holding up all right. I was going to send you to the line. <laughs> you know, they didn't want me to send you to the line. All right, K-State's up by one now. 11 minutes to play. Geldner and Clint Normore have checked in for the Jayhawks. Meyer is back in for Kansas State. Now they're putting Masucci down low and leave Manning to flash across the baseline right there. Now Masucci's moving up and down too. He's open underneath. Look at that jam around Manning. He just cannot get off a clean shot. They just shut him down in the second half. Eight on the shot clock. Harris will take it from the baseline and hits it. Keith Harris. Big basket right there for Kansas. It keeps him in the basketball game and quiets the crowd. 
Normore. He's number four. Bledsoe's guarded by Manning. Good ball movement again. Kansas State. Kansas in that man-to-man -man defense. Inside, Bledsoe and in. All of a sudden, Bledsoe has six points all in the second half, all within the last four possessions for Kansas State. You know who kicked the ball inside? Mitch Richmond. Richmond hasn't scored in the second half. Manny. Well, we talked about he'd been a little quiet in the second half. I think that's only his second field goal. He's got 14. 9.25 left to go. And Roger, I go back to one of the keys of the game for Kansas State was holding Manning on, his, on or under his average. And so far, they're, they're right on target to do that. Foul's going to be on Masucci. Now, see, Bledsoe's gotten some confidence. They're looking for him. And now he draws the foul. Let's watch Bledsoe take the ball right here from Mitch Richmond. Good dish to the inside. Watch Manning almost block the shot. Almost got it. He looked at him frustrated. Threw his fist in front of his face and said, I should have had that. Bledsoe is getting a little bit more confidence. I tell you what, that might open it up a little bit for Richmond. He's a little bit for Kansas State. And, you know, one of the things that Kansas State does so well, they're out-rebounding their opponents by eight. That's the seventh best in the nation. And an air ball. That will cause you to lose a lot of confidence. You only can't a, get the free throw up. Only a 53% free throw shooter. But they're not a big team, Larry, yet they're out-rebounding their opponents by eight. They just do that with depth, hustle, and desire. And they do a good job out of this zone of being able to pack it in there, and they've got good leapers, good jumpers inside. Manning, baseline. Well, he forced that one a bit. Glover. Kansas leads it by one, 51-50. Richmond. Won't go. Bledsoe can't get it. Still battling, and the Jayhawks come up with it. Well, a couple of real good chances there for Kansas State. Larry Brown wants a timeout. Good timeout. 8.33 left to go. His team leads by one. you got to get organized. We've talked about the offensive rebounding of Kansas State and their ability to put the ball back in the basket after they missed. This time, they didn't get a basket, but look at them work the board. One, two. Take it back up. Here's a miss on the other side. Meyer goes up. He gets a tip at it. Then they lose it, and Kansas comes up with the ball. That gives you some idea of the ability of Kansas State to get inside and rebound, and that's the reason they're number seven in the nation in rebound margin. And that man, Lon Kruger, right there is the reason. 8.33 left to go. Along with Larry Conley, I'm Roger Twabo. Kansas State second in the Big Eight behind Oklahoma. Tied for third with Missouri. It was a great game last night between Iowa State and Missouri. Oh. Big win for Iowa State. Five Rose. teams from this conference can go to the tournament. Newton, good fake right there. Missed the shot. Gellner, just not strong hands. Kansas gets in position to get the ball, but they can't get a hold of it. McCoy, he's got a body. Hits it. And a shot. You love those wide loads, don't you? You like those guys that post up well inside, and he's one that does extremely well. 52-51, Kansas State. Kansas State stays with that zone defense. Newton is fouled from behind. It's going to be on Meyer. That's his fourth. And Lon Kruger's got a decision to make now. You're going to watch his center get his fourth foul. There it is. Meyer on the backside. That's a pretty good move to the inside by uh, Milton Newton. What do you do? Do you take him out or do you leave him in? I think he's going to leave him in. Well, 7.39 left to go. Milton Newton is only a 47% free throw shooter. You said it. And Bledsoe will come in, and now Meyer comes out. 
You know, what you do in a situation like that, as well as Myers play, take him over, let him sit down, get a blow, let him sit there three or four minutes and get him back in there in the last couple of minutes to play because he's ready to play tonight. Newton gets the second one. It's tied at 52. Kansas, one time, had an eight-point lead early in the second half. Good job by Gelner that time on defense. Glover outside. McCoy squares up, hits it. And he's got it right over Harris, who was all over it. McCoy's got nine, 54-52. Yeah, we're going to get one of those finishes. Manning is there. They just got to get it to him and let him create something. Newton outside. Geldner the follow. Manning gets it and puts it in. Good job by Jeff Geldner there. We talked about K-State getting on that backboard. How about Kansas that time? Two good offensive rebounds, and Manning finished it up by sticking in the basket. 16 now for Danny Manning. Boy, Henson had 11 in the first half. Offensively, he's done nothing in the second half. Gelner, the rebound. He's down on the floor, and they're going to call traveling. I think both both coaches wanted fouls out of that play. One on a charge, and that time, when uh, I don't know who, who had the ball and fell on the ground. Gelner. Gelner looked like he was pushed. Larry Brown wanted that. Lon Kruger wanted a charge. Piper checks in, Newton comes out. 6.32 left to go. It's tied at 54. Richmond inbound the basketball. Henson had three three-pointers in the first half. He hasn't taken a shot in the second half. Victor's done a pretty good job defensively on him. I think that's the reason. He shattered him pretty good in the second half. Richmond. In and out. Bledsoe. And the foul is going to be on Bledsoe. That's his second. Right, and he almost made one of the best tip ins of the year. Yeah. He had three guys in front of him, and he reached over all three of them and knocked the ball up, and it just barely rolled off the edge of the rim. Bledsoe, along with Richmond, both transfers from Mobile, Missouri Junior College. Piper takes a look inside. I'll tell you what, Bledsoe's done a pretty good job on Manning denying the basketball in there. They've got one guy in front, one in back, and as soon as the ball hits his hands, the other three guys just gravitate toward the ball. I'll tell you what, we've seen very few fast break situations. Both teams have done a real good job at stopping the transition. McCoy and Bledsoe inside, denying the basketball to Manning, who now moves outside. Harris loses it. Pritchard gets it back. Harris in the middle to Manning on the baseline. Won't go, and it's Kansas basketball. See, Brown is yelling at Manning, take it to the hole. Don't shoot a five-footer when you can go in and jam it. Well, you know, that's been his tradition, the way he's always played the game. Yep. He is not a guy who takes it to the hole strong. He's just not that type of player. Larry Brown, you saw him right there showing him the shoot. Take the ball inside and go hard to that basket. 5.32 left to go. It's tied at 54. Pritchard. Geldner. Kansas just swings it around the perimeter. Bad pass. Intended for Manning. And I'll tell you what. Larry Brown is all over Pritchard right now. Well, it was a type of pass that Manning had a difficult time getting to. It was not away. It was away from the defense, but it was not close enough to him for him to reach in and make a move with. It. Well, Larry says he wants these guys to shoot outside, but they seem very reluctant. Richmond. Henson. That's a two-pointer. He's got it. Didn't hear anything from him in the second half, and all of a sudden he hits a key pass. 56-54, Kansas State with the lead and 4.40 left to go. 
Kansas State zones, back back inside again. Piper takes a look. Manny moves out. Three pointer for Pritchard. He hits it. All right, from the doghouse to the penthouse in a hurry, huh? Well, Larry Brown looked at him as soon as he made it. He says, "That's what I want." Yeah. 57-56. Bledsoe. The tip by McCoy, and once again, Kansas State strong on the offensive glass. That's amazing to me. That is not a big basketball team out there, but they continue to rebound the ball, particularly on that offensive end. 58-57, one-point Wildcat lead. K-State again, back into that zone. You see Manning low on the block. Manning loses it. Off Piper, Kansas State, McCoy. The pull-up pop. Tipped around, tipped again. Bledsoe blocked by Manning. McCoy puts it up. And a whistle. And a foul on Chris Piper. Kansas just can't hold on to the basketball. Well, they had their chance that time because the ball caromed off the back of that rim, and it looked like they were going to get it and go the other way with it. Now watch this shot. McCoy kicks it. It comes right back off. There's a good follow. Three Kansas players right there. There's Piper. Now watch Piper commit the foul. He just reached back and grabbed it. Milt Newton will check in. Chris Piper has fouled out. The senior from Lawrence is final appearance here at Ahern Fieldhouse. That's really an unusual play because Fred McCoy really came after he missed that shot. He was standing out beyond the three-point range, took off and just ran to the basket, and the ball fell right into his hands, and Piper grabbed him on the arm. McCoy is 75% free-throw shooter on the year. He's got seven in the second half. You know, he averages 11 for the year. He didn't start tonight. Meyer had the good game. Now McCoy comes off the bench and really played well. 59, 57, two-point lead. Kansas State and Kansas. Wildcats won the first meeting in Lawrence, snapping the 55-game home win streak of the Jayhawks. 317 left to go in the game. Good defense by Kansas State. Manning again had to come to the outside. He hits it. Give me the ball and let me take over. Might as well. Manning with 18. And it's tied at 59. Less than three minutes left. Grubb has handled the ball well in the second half of Kansas State. It's allowed Hinton to go to that shooting guard. McCoy. McCoy wants it. Won't go. Pritchard with the rebound. The right place at the right time for Kevin Pritchard, the sophomore from Tulsa. There was a look-away pass. He was trying to find Harris, and Larry Brown immediately points the clock and says, Kevin, timeout, 2.21 to go. We're tied at 59. Tied 59-59. Now watch the move by Piper here. Take the ball inside to Manning. Kick it back to Pritchard. This is what they want to do. They want to open up that zone defense. It can't stay thrown at them. They make the three-point shot, and that's what Larry Brown has to have from his guard. Kansas has made just one three-pointer in the second half. Kansas State has made just one three-pointer in the second half. So what dominated the play in the first half has not been a factor in the second half. You know what's changed around? They're starting to get on the backboard. They're missing shots, and both clubs now are really attacking the glass. So what we had on the first half was an offensive show outside. What we have now is a lot of banging on the backboard inside. North Carolina State ranked 14th. Clemson, ACC action. Coming up next here on ESPN. Jimmy v has got a good one. Yeah, good club. Myers checked back into the game. McCoy comes out for Kansas State. Sure, Brown wants him to work the clock right now. 2.07 left to go in the game. Harris, turn around. Manning the tip. Geldner tips. Geldner again. Jeff Geldner. Oh, the sophomore from Charleston, Illinois, has got 10. And a strong move on the offensive boards. 
I'll tell you, Brown, so, Brown told me, he says, Gelder doesn't have half the talent that Minor or Livingston does, but he says he just works so hard and he doesn't make any mistakes. And he's been a plus for him since he's been in there. Richmond, in and out. Meyer, and he's fouled. It's going to be on Harris. You hear him? The, uh, the players saying, box out, box out. They're telling Harris to box out. You can see three of them. You, they, you can read their lips. All three of them were saying, box out. Keep him away from the basket. Watch Meyer. He comes back off the bench after that fourth foul. Goes right back in and gets an offensive rebound. There's Harris right there. Manning on the backside, but Harris will get the foul. And Meyer will go to the line, the senior from Wichita, Kansas. 66% free throw shooter on the year. He's got 10 points now tonight. Right, so he's had an awfully good basketball game tonight. You know, he's been sitting over on that bench now for five minutes, and he comes right back in and picks up right where he left off. And he hits them both. It's tied at 61, 134 left to go. Strategy and the wheels are going to start to roll. K-State again, packing that zone, back inside, Manning floating around. But Harris wants it down low, he's looking for it too. Myers guarding him. Pritchard, Geldner. Newton, three-point land, in and out. Geldner's trip, no call, but he's able to save it. And the question is, do they run the clock? There's 35 seconds left and 52 on the regular clock, on the time clock. There's the game clock right there, 28 on the shot clock. Tied at 61. Looking for Manning. Pritchard, three-pointer. Got it! Big shot. Big, big bucket. Second straight three-pointer for Kevin Pritchard. He's got nine in the second half. Twelve for the night. And the Jayhawks lead it by three with 21 seconds to go. And Lonnie Kruger wants a timeout. Kansas 64. Kansas State 61. Roger Twaddle, Larry Connolly back with you at Ahern Fieldhouse, Manhattan, Kansas. Newton with the jumper from outside. Now watch Gelder from the weak side. He gets tripped right there accidentally, but manages to get a hand on the ball. Pritchard keeps it. Kansas gets another 45. And look at Larry Brown with a pat on the head. This is a kid who last year, Larry, shot 41% from three-point land. He came into this game tonight shooting 18%. Well, he's back two big ones in the second half, though. Okay, Kansas State down by three. This is what they've done from three-point land. Glover, Richmond, Henson, Scott, anybody. Fifth in the nation. Everybody but Meyer is going to do it. 21 seconds left to go. One of them's got to make it, and the Kansas defense knows that. they got to extend that defense. Put the pressure on outside. Now they're going Richmond inside. inside. He's got it. 13 seconds left, and a timeout by Kansas State. So now they're going to put the pressure. That's an interesting move right there by Lon Kruger. Instead of going for the three, they go for the two. 13 seconds left to go. Kansas leads it by one. Roger Twyville, Larry Conley back with you in Manhattan, Kansas. The Jayhawks of the University of Kansas, a one-point lead. They will have the ball inbounds with 13 seconds left to go. Interesting strategy by Lon Kruger. Timeouts two apiece. Don't go for the three-pointer. Get the easy two and then put the pressure on the other team. Well, I think what he's got to do now, he's obviously got to come out and press. Kansas just takes care of the basketball and gets the ball in the right hands. The good free-throw shooters, they've got a chance to really lock this one away. Kansas has had problems from the line. Last in the Big 8 in free-throw percentage. Geldner gets it into Pritchard. He finds Manning. Less than 10 seconds to go. Newton with it. Six seconds. Harris is finally fouled with four seconds left. Now, Harris is a 55% free throw shooter. They're up by one. And realistically, he was right underneath the basket. But any coach in that situation will be happy to have him do what he did, which was go ahead and try to take it back outside. I'm going to tell you something. If I'm Keith Harris and I'm a 55% free throw shooter, I'm going to put the ball in the basket. I'm going to turn around and stick it in. But he's been in the doghouse a long time, Larry. Four seconds left. 
But I'll tell you what, this kid is a clutch, clutch player. He's got a chance to prove it. I think they're going to take a timeout. K-State is. They're going to ice him a little bit. Yep. Harris is one of two tonight. 55 seconds left to go. And we'll keep it right here at Ahern Fieldhouse in Manhattan, Kansas. You know, the discussion that's going to go on in the K-State uh, huddle right now is, all right, what are we going to do if he misses the front end? What are we going to do if he misses the second end? They've got to have a strategy for both. Because if he makes both of them, they've got to set up a three-point play. If he makes one, then they can come down and go for a two. So they've got a lot to talk about in that huddle down there. A lot of interesting discussions going on right now. I'm not too sure the fact that they've got one more timeout after this that I wouldn't go ahead and call another one to try to get down and discuss it after, they, uh, after the free throw. Last year in an 80-75 double overtime win against Kansas State, Harris played 40 minutes and he scored four of his six points in the second OT. But he really made his name for himself in a nationally televised game against St. John's in Madison Square Garden where he hit two free throws with no time remaining to clinch a 62-60 victory. So the kid's got some savvy. You look at 55% for the year, but it's a whole other thing when there's four seconds left. Playing against the greatest rival you have in the history of the school. You know, I kind of thought that the rivalry between Kansas and Kansas State might be the biggest rivalry in the Big Eight as far as games played. But interestingly enough, Kansas and Missouri have played three more games than Kansas and Kansas State have played. McCoy will come in. And Dobbins comes out. Four seconds remain. Kansas leads it by one, 64-63. And Keith Harris, a sophomore from Santa Monica, California, will go to the line shooting one and one. And that's the best it. McCoy has it and calls a timeout with three seconds left. You know what? I thought Steve Henson was going to run right up my tangles back. He came right at the official, right in his face, yelling timeout, timeout. Now what's going to happen? Now they've got three seconds. Now they're down one. They can go inside and not worry about a three-point shot. Anything for a basket. But the problem is they've got to go to the court. The first thing they've got to do is get one pass to mid-court. Then the second pass has got to be the shot. And Kansas State now with no timeouts remaining. Kansas has two. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been an exciting basketball game here at Ahern Fieldhouse. The last time these two arch rivals will meet in this structure. Next year will be a new facility here at Kansas State University. Larry Brown has not lost here. Coming up next, North Carolina State and Clemson. But think about this, too. Kansas has Duke at home on Saturday. Then they're on the road against Missouri and Oklahoma. This would be such a big victory for Larry Brown. And this team, which has been decimated by injuries. Meanwhile, Ron Kruger is in a battle to win the Big A Conference Championship. Oklahoma's up on top. And the loss column is down one right now. Oklahoma's lost one. He's lost two. If Kansas State loses this game, they'll have three losses. And there won't be a team in the Big A closer than three losses to Oklahoma who only has one. I'll tell you what, that is an offensive machine down in Norman Hearts. I don't know if anybody can beat them. Kansas State taking their time to come back out on the floor. They'll send out Richmond. And get this, Nick Richmond, averaging 24 points a game, has just 11 points tonight, just one basket in the second half. Kansas has done a magnificent job for that in the second half and shutting him down. Here we go. Bledsoe will inbound it. He's going deep. McCoy loses it, and the steal by Geldner, and Kansas wins it. Kansas wins it. Kansas beats Kansas State 64-63. Boy, Jeff Geldner, the sophomore from Charleston, Illinois, did a big job for him tonight. Keith Harris off the bench, and Kevin Pritchard with a couple of key three-pointers, the only two for Kansas in the second half. And Larry Brown has yet to lose at Kansas State in his five years with the Jayhawks. This watch, is the last play. Watch Jeff Gellner make an excellent defensive play here. The ball goes all the way to the other end. He picks it up. Gellner reaches down, slaps it out of his hands, goes the other way, and the celebration begins.
So Geldner with 10 points, his season average is 3.9, and there's the reaction from the Kansas bench. And a happy bunch of I'll tell you what, and the Jayhawks all by themselves now in third place in the Big 8 Conference. For Larry Conley, I'm Roger Twibel. Our final score from Ahern Fieldhouse in Manhattan, Kansas, the Jayhawks 64, the Wildcats 63.